Good morning, ladies and gentlemen and members of the press. My name is Larry Warren. Twenty years ago, in 1980, I was a security specialist assigned to RAF Bentwaters, Woodbridge, NATO Air Force facilities in Suffolk, East Anglia. I had a secret security clearance. I guarded our backline nuclear weapons that were stored there at the time, without the knowledge of the people of Great Britain. I went through a portion of a three-night UFO event where objects made incursions over our WSA, fired pencil-thin beams of light into them, and adversely affected the ordinance, possibly. These objects were on the ground on two different nights. Potentially, there was another life form seen. This is an unpopular truth. These events were of extreme defense significance to not only Her Majesty's government, but this government as well, and they are still shrouded in secrecy. They are very complex. They are very vast. This is more about a human rights issue than just a UFO issue. Twenty years ago, this room would be empty. I see a turn in history. This is history in motion, but unfortunately, it's history with a security classification. I would be more than honored to swear under oath that I experienced what I did. I saw what I saw. These events produced not only after numerous denials by this government, a memo by Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, our deputy base commander, which reads like science fiction. It also produced years later an on-site audio tape he made as these objects performed their feats and did what they did and violated airspace. These events are of extreme defense significance. I hope my brothers in arms that went through these events will be given immunity at some point and be able to join us here. It is an honor to share the stage with all of these people. And I think for all of our children, my son Dennis, God bless you, son, we can change the world. You're heroes for being here also, and I will testify in front of Congress if asked to. God bless. Thank you. Hi, my name is George Filer III. The reason I'm here is because George Filer V is in the hangar and will be born on Friday. And I'm a retired intelligence officer and flyer with almost 5,000 hours, and I didn't believe in UFOs until London Control called us in the winter of 1962 and asked us, would we chase one? And we said, sure. So we let down from 30,000 feet to 1,000 feet where the UFO was hovering, and we went into a steep dive and actually exceeded the uh, red line of the aircraft. So it's kind of dangerous changing UFOs. In any case, uh, I was able to get the UFO on the aircraft radar at about 40 miles, and we could see a light out in the distance. And as we closed, we kept on picking up this radar return point I'm mentioning that the radar return was very uh, distinct and uh, solid indicating it was some kind of a metallic object. We got about a mile from the UFO and it kind of lit up in the sky and went off into space very similar to what the shuttle looks like when it takes off. Um, later on I was working in intelligence in Vietnam, I briefed uh, General Brown about UFOs when I was in um, 21st Air Force, McGuire Air Force Base. I briefed General Glau about a UFO over Tehran, Iran, in 1976, that two F-4s from the Iranian Air Force had taken off and tried to intercept the UFO. And when they turned on their fire control systems, they immediately went on all the electrical systems went out, the planes had to return to base. This was particularly significant because it was also picked up on satellites. In 1978, on January 18th, I was going into the base. Every morning I did the uh, briefing to the general staff, and I noticed that uh, there are some lights off in the distance at the end of the end runway there. And when I got into the command post, the uh, senior master sergeant in charge said that there had been UFOs in the pattern all night. They're on radar. The tower had seen them. They got in aircraft reports and so on. And that one had landed or crashed at um, Fort Dix. 
Fort Dix and McGuire are right together. And this is kind of like the Roswell of the East. But in any case, uh, an alien had come off the craft and had been shot by a military policeman and apparently was wounded and was heading for McGuire. So for whatever reason, the uh, aliens liked uh, the Air Force better than the Army, perhaps, because they're <laughs> shooting at them. But in any case, uh, our security police went out there and um, found him on the end of the runway dead. And uh, they asked me to brief the general staff, of General Tom Sadler, and um, at the 8 o'clock stand-up briefing. And I said, I don't think I want to do this. You know, the general doesn't have a good sense of humor, and I'm not sure I, I believe this. So I did some checking, called the 438th Command Post, and everybody had pretty much the same story. And uh, at 8 o'clock that morning, just before I went on, was going to brief this, and I was very wor worried about it. They said, don't brief it, that it's too hot, so to speak. That's pretty much my story, and I'm prepared to tell the story in front of Congress, and uh, it is the truth. Now, because of this, I've stayed interested in UFOs, and I'm the Eastern Director of the Mutual UFO Network. And between the uh, National Reporting Center and Peter Davenport and the MUFON, we get 100 reports a week on average of people from all over the United States that see these things regularly. And if you start checking, they're out there and they're low, and people are seeing them all the time. And these are highly qualified people, all of whom essentially give us the reports by email. Thank you.